Hey guys, welcome to the channel. I got a really quick video for you guys tonight. I'm just going to cover something real quick because it's been very highly requested on all of my media feeds. But first, before we get into all that, I just got a haircut today. What do you guys think? Looks good, right? I like it. Because this is a short video, it gives me an opportunity to tell you guys to make sure you follow me on all of my socials. We got Facebook, we got Twitter, we got Instagram, and they're all at SRT Bull. So I want to see you guys on all of my socials. Now that we have all that out of the way, stay tuned and check out the video. Welcome back to Rust Admin Academy, where I teach you guys all of the insider tricks to owning and operating your own successful Rust server. If you find this video helpful in the slightest bit, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up for me. If you didn't like the video, hit the thumbs down, but throw me a comment down below so that I know what I can do better for you guys. If you want to see more content just like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notification bells so that you get notified as soon as I upload new content. The point of this video is to teach you guys how to make your server automatically restart in the event of a crash, or let's say you have a scheduled restarting system or whatever. Um, basically it makes it so that you never actually have to manually go in and restart your batch file so that your server starts up. And a little bit of a side note, this is really only, this really only pertains to people that are either doing a local host or they're paying for an actual dedicated box where they're hosting their servers out of. The different hosting sites like game servers and stuff like that, they already have an automatic reboot process embedded inside their default batch file. So you shouldn't ever really have to worry about that with a hosting provider. But like I said, this is just for people that are hosting on their own computers at home or they're paying for a dedicated box somewhere else where they're hosting the server. So basically what that boils down to is, is if you don't have this screen somewhere, this really doesn't apply to you, but this could still be good information for you to have in the event that you do switch to a local host or a dedicated server. So this is the long and the short of it. If we just go to our command prompt and type either restart, which we normally do, and that will start a five minute countdown timer. After the five minutes, the server will automatically shut down. We can of course put in a time there. We could put in 30 seconds, we could put in 10 seconds, whatever we want, and that's how long it's gonna count down for. But the default is five minutes. So let's just do, uh, let's just do five seconds real quick. And this is gonna count down for five seconds, and then it's gonna unload all of the plugins, and then it's gonna shut down the server, and then you're gonna see the command prompt actually go away, just like that. So now if we weren't sitting in front of our computer, our server is offline and we don't necessarily want it offline. And I'm gonna show you how to fix that. So what do we gotta to do to fix this problem? Well, basically what we need to do is we need to put in what's called a restart loop into our batch file. So go into your favorite editor. I prefer Notepad++. It just makes things a whole lot easier for organization purposes. So what we need to do is we're going to add four lines at the beginning of our batch file, as well as four lines at the end of our batch file. And those lines I'm going to put in the video description down below so that you guys can just copy and paste it directly from there. So I've added the eight lines of code that we needed to add to our batch file. Now I'm just going to save it and I'm going to restart the server. And this process you've all seen before, so I'm just going to speed this up real quick. Okay, so that's our server back up and running as we would expect it to be. So let's do the exact same thing again. Let's just do restart uh, and we're gonna change it to five seconds instead of five minutes. And we're gonna let it go through its countdown process of five seconds and then we're gonna watch what happens. So it's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna unload the plugins. It's gonna save the server and then it's gonna start the restart loop that we've now added to our batch file. So now you can see it there. It says restarting server. We don't have to do anything. And there you go. The server just restarts itself. So when is this gonna be helpful? Let's say if your server's not running very stable or whatever, and it just, it crashes or hangs up or uh, whatever, there's a lot of different things that can happen to your server. Once it crashes, it will automatically restart. So you don't have to worry about it anymore. 
The one caveat to that though is if it puts up the warning box where it says rust dedicated.exe has failed and it leaves that box up on the screen it's going to stay there it's not actually going to go through the restart loop because it's waiting for you to click on that box saying yes i accept the fact that rust dedicated.exe has failed and then that then becomes even still all you got to do is click ok on that box and it will go through the process of restarting your server so there you go. That's the restart loop for your Rust server. Super easy. And like I said, I'm going to put all the information down in the video description down below. So you can just copy and paste it and put it directly into your batch file so that you have the exact same restart loop that I just showed you guys. If you guys have any problems or any questions, make sure you leave them down in the comment section down below. I will respond to each and every single one of them. And like I said at the beginning of the video, I want to see you guys all over my social media. So make sure you click on at SRT Bull on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I hope you guys are enjoying these tutorials. If not, please let me know what I can do better for you. And I'm always getting lots of recommendations for new plugins and new features and aspects to cover in videos. So make sure you guys keep those coming in. I appreciate it. And I will do my best to make sure that I do every single request that I get. All right, that's it for this video. Check out the videos on the side. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button in the top left-hand corner. I'll see you guys on the next video.